Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at section 1245, Depreciation Recapture. This section is a subset of section 1231 assets. Now, if you don't know what 1231 assets are, you need to be familiar with this. And good, good news is just look in the description below and there's a link for section 1231 asset. This topic is covered in an income tax course. The CPA exam regulation section definitely covered there and the enrolled agent exam. As always, um, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a professional level. So if you have a LinkedIn account, please connect with me. If you're a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page. And if you'd like to connect with me on a personal level, I would greatly appreciate it. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube. If you like the recording, please like them. Share them with others. Let the world know about the YouTube. So if you're benefiting, other people would benefit as well. I do have LinkedIn, um, a Twitter account and you can find additional lectures on my website. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. There's a good chance if you're watching this recording, you are either an accounting student in college or you are a CPA candidate. In both scenarios, in both situations, good news, because on Jaeger CPA Review, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures, tax auditing, uh, uh, regulation, business law, uh, with thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solutions, simulations, textbook, the Jaeger course integrate the blueprint with the AI CPA for the CPA exam. You have audio lectures, electronic flashcards, plus others. If you happen to choose Jaeger, which I strongly suggest you do so, use my code PMF. You will get 15% off the best valued CPA course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel about section 1245 depreciation recapture well from the term depreciation recapture it means the asset will have to be depreciated so it's an asset that's subject to depreciation well what assets are subject to depreciation remember 1231 assets are long term in nature remember you have to hold them more than one year and if you don't know what section 1231 assets it's very important that you go and view this recording which is it's almost half an hour and i do have the link in the description below so click on 1231 assets stop here if you don't know what 1231 assets are just a, a review real quick which is the, the 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 most important thing to know about section 1231 asset they are they get the best of both worlds what does that mean if there is a gain they are treated as long-term capital gain LTCG, or if it's, if we incur a loss on Section 1231 assets, they are treated as ordinary loss. So we like ordinary loss, and if it's a gain, we prefer to be an, a capital gain rather than ordinary gain. So what you have to do is, if it's a gain, do you want to treat it as long-term capital gain, or do you want to treat it as ordinary income, and you want to treat it as long-term capital gain? Why? Because it has a lower tax uh, lower tax rate, long-term capital gain. So that's Section 1231 assets. They give us the best of two worlds. But we have one hurdle to overcome, and that's Section 1245. What happened is this. When you sell an asset and it's subject to depreciation and it's treated as long-term capital gain, we have to determine if there's any depreciation to recapture. And this is where Section 1245 comes into place. And that's why we say it's a potential long-term capital gain. It's Section 1231 asset, but the long-term capital gain is potential. Why? Because if it's subject to, cap to depreciation recapture, which is section 1245, then that depreciation recapture will recharacterize the asset as ordinary income. Let me work you a quick example. Let's assume we bought an asset. And we're going to work many examples, but let me just show it to you real quick for 100,000. And this is 1231 asset, 1231 asset. It's a machinery used in a business, 1231 asset. So we depreciated this asset over three years. Year one, we took 40,000. Year two, we took 30,000. And year three, we took 30,000. So total depreciation we took over three years is 100,000. And in year four, we sold this asset, let's say for 15,000. Sold for 15,000. So we sold it and we received 15,000. Let's compute the gain. Well, the asset has a cost of 100,000 minus 100,000 of accumulated depreciation, and these are the 100,000. So the basis for this asset equal to zero, the basis equal to zero. Now we sold this asset for 15,000. So 15,000 minus zero equal to 15,000. Okay, so this is the gain. What type of gain are we dealing with here? Because this is a I told you this asset is 1231 asset. So is this long-term capital gain? And the answer is, unfortunately, it's not. Why? 
because the gain that we experience, the gain that we generated from this asset is already the it's most of it, not most of it, all of it, depreciation recapture. So what happened over a period of three years, these were year one, year two, and year three, those were deductions. We took deductions, ordinary income deduction, ordinary income deduction. So what happened when we sell it, we're going to have to recapture those ordinary income because we already took the deduction. Therefore, we cannot take the deduction twice. Therefore, when we sold it for 15000 the basis is zero. The, this gain will be considered ordinary gain. This gain will be considered ordinary gain. Why? Because all the gain, all the gain is part of the depreciation. The reason we had the gain is because we depreciated the asset and we already took an ordinary deduction. Therefore, the income will be ordinary income. Okay, so this is, I, I made an extreme example and made the basis of this asset equal to zero. But this is, in a nutshell, what section 1245 is. We're going to have more about this. Okay, so what does section 1245, 1245 applies to? It applies to tangible and intangible personal property and non-residential realty using accelerated method cost recovery under acres from 81 to 86. Don't worry about this because this really don't exist anymore. Okay, so we don't have to worry about this part. So it applies to personal property, whether it's tangible or intangible. Simply put, the gain created by depreciation recapture will be treated as ordinary income. And what do I mean by this? Remember, we sold the asset, um, you remember this in this example, for 15,000, and the basis was zero. All the gain, all the gain was depreciation recapture. Therefore, it will be considered ordinary income. Gain created by appreciation will be treated as long-term capital gain. What is appreciation? It means if we sold that asset for greater than 100,000. Why? Because the cost of the asset was 100,000. So if we sold that asset that I worked with earlier for more than 100,000, it will be considered, it will be considered uh, long-term capital gain. Now let's work another example, a little bit more detail. Okay. So let's assume we bought an asset cost of $100. Depreciation to date is $70. Therefore, the cost basis of is $30. Let's first assume we sold the asset for $10. Simply put, uh, consideration received is 30. The basis, I'm um, sorry, consideration received is 10. The basis is 30. We have a loss of $20. This is 1231 loss. Okay, so pr pretty straightforward. Nothing to worry about this. It's ordinary loss. Okay, now. Let's assume we sold this asset for $80. Well, let's do this. We sold it for 80. The basis is 30. We have a gain of 50. Now, what's the character of the gain? Well, let me show you this. Let's assume this is the asset. Let's assume, I'm just gonna do this. This is the asset. This is the asset that we are dealing with. So this is zero and this is 100, okay? What we did so far, we depreciated the asset up to $70. So we depreciated the asset. This is all depreciation. So this is $70. Okay. All right. So far, so good. We depreciated the asset for $70. Therefore, this is the basis. This is the $30. Okay. Now, we sold the asset for 80. So 80 minus 30 equal to 50. Notice, as long as our gain is below six, below 70, as long as our gain is below 70, all the gain is depreciation because this $70 is depreciation. This $70 is depreciation. So as long as you sell this asset and your gain is less than 70, okay? Your gain is less than 70, it will be depreciation recapture depreciation recapture and depreciation recapture is ordinary income so if we sold it for 80 the gain is ordinary income as 1245 depreciation recapture now let's assume we sold it for 150 well if we sold it for 150 okay let me increase this if we sold it for 150 it means we sold it right here we sold it for 150 let's determine the, the amount of the gain and the character of the gain we sold it for 150 the basis is 30 so the total gain is 120. Now, how are we going to, what, what type of a gain is this? Well, remember, the first $70 is ordinary income. This is the first $70, ordinary income. And anything more, 
more than uh, more than the uh, depreciation recapture, which is 50, this will be long-term capital gain, which is section 1231 gain, section 1230, 1231 gain, okay? And notice, just to kind of show you, this is the appreciation part. So this is appreciation, this is appreciation for the gain, and this is depreciation gain. So the depreciation gain is considered, the depreciation gain is considered ordinary income, and the appreciation gain is considered long-term capital gain. And this is what I meant to say here earlier when I said gain created by depreciation is ordinary income, gain created by appreciation appreciation is long-term capital gain. So hopefully you, you see the picture here, what I meant to say. Okay, so equal to 120. The first $70 is ordinary income and the remainder is depreciation recapture. So $50 is treated as long-term capital gain. So let's go now and let's go ahead and recap what we just said. Okay, so assets subject to depreciation or cost recovery may be subject to depreciation recapture when disposed of again. Okay, so we already told you this. Losses on depreciable asset receive 1231 treatment. So losses are 1231 losses. No recapture occur in loss situation. And there's a loss, there's no recapture, okay? Because it's a loss, we don't have to recapture anything. Okay, depreciation recapture characterize the gain that would appear as section 1231 gain. And the code contain two section, okay? 1235 asset, this is what we're doing now. And this is for personal tangible or intangible, I'm just going to put tangible property. It's also intangible, but we really don't deal with intangible. And there's another depreciation recapture provision, 1250, and that's for real estate property or real property, not, real, not only real estate, real property, for real property. Okay, and this is this will have a separate recording, section 1250. The concept is the same, but the depreciation recapture is for real property. Um, when gain on the disposition of 1245 asset is less than the total amount of accumulated depreciation, the total gain will be treated as depreciation recapture. And this is what I showed you in that example. I said we said $100. Remember, we said the, the cost has $100. The depreciation was $70. Any gain below $70 it will be treated as ordinary income. When the gain on the disposition is greater than the total of accumulated depreciation, when the gain is greater than the accumulated depreciation, their accumulated depreciation part will be ordinary income, and the gain in access will be Section 1231. And remember, when we sold it at 150, we had an additional $50. So the total, you know, the total was more. We sold it for 150. The cost was 30. The gain was 120. Remember, 70 was ordinary income and 50 was long-term capital gain, which is section 1231. This is what we're saying here, okay? This is what we're saying here. Part of it is the accumulated depreciation is ordinary income, and the gain in access, which is the $50, is long-term capital capital gain, okay? A few things, I just wanna make a few observations about section 1245, so this way you can wrap your head around it. Usually total depreciation taken will exceed the recognized gain, generally speaking, generally, speaking, generally speaking. I will tell you why, and hopefully this makes sense, and we'll start to, oh, I see what's going on here. Usually, the total depreciation, so what we're saying is, the depreciation will be greater than the gain. In other words, most of it will be considered ordinary income. Therefore, this position of 1245 property re usually result in ordinary income rather than section 1231 gain. Now you might be saying, why? Like you might be saying, why do we do this? And you're telling me most of the time, especially in the real world, it will be ordinary income. Think about personal property. What are personal property? You're talking about machinery. You're talking about trucks, vehicles, furniture, and so on. Think about it. After you use those assets for several years, you bought them for a certain amount and use them for several years. Do you think you're going to sell them greater than the cost of what you bought them for? Think about it. You bought a piece of furniture and used it in your business for three years and you bought it for $5,000. You think when you sell it, you're going to sell it greater than $5,000? Not likely. Not likely because those assets... I'm just gonna use this word, it's not correct, technically correct, but they're waste an asset. You buy them and they, the asset goes away in a sense. It doesn't, it doesn't, 
it, it doesn't appreciate like that's what i mean by wasting asset versus real property if you buy a building if you buy a piece of land there's a chance of there's a chance of appreciation but not personal property just kind of hopefully you kind of um this makes sense to you okay generally no section 1231 occur okay unless section 1245 property is disposed of more than the original cost which is not a likely event not a likely event and you might be saying why do we have to do this it's by law you just by law you have to know this okay Re recapture applies to total amount of depreciation or allowed or allowable regardless of the depreciation method used or the holding period of the property whether you took the depreciation or not take the depreciation you just have to assume allowed or allowable depreciation whether you took it or not you have to assume it remember section 1231 they have to be long-term holding period so remember on the exam on the cpa exam or on your class your professor might trick you and give you an asset that that you hold it less than a year and tells you to correct to compute the gain and characterize the gain if it's less than a year it's always ordinary income okay so just be careful section 1231 don't apply for short term period okay so section 1245 does not apply to losses which receive 1231 treatment as well and gains from the disposition of 1245 asset may be also be treated as passive activity gain you just need to know what passive activity gain in a separate recording the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example just to kind of get your get your feet wet which is i i believe you did already get your feet wet but it's important to work an example maybe an example or two just to see how this all work sienna industries sold three properties which is section 1231 asset during 2018 they did the data on these properties are as follow a rack a forklift and a bin they're giving us the cost when were they acquired which is important how much depreciation they took so far what they were sold for and what date they were sold on okay and very important the dates because remember if it's short term then there's nothing to worry about it's going to be all ordinary okay so the first asset is a hundred thousand that's the cost that's the cost the depreciation is 62 it's a long-term capital asset so let's see uh, we had a cost of a hundred thousand minus depreciation of 62 the basis for this property is 38,000. The basis is 38,000. We sold it for 80 uh, we sold it for 85. We say okay, 85,000 minus the basis minus the basis of 38. It's going to give us a gain of 47. This is the gain. All you have to do compare the gain to the depreciation amount. Compare the gain to the depreciation amount. And guess what? The gain is less than the depreciation amount, therefore it's all section 1245 ordinary income why because the gain is less than the depreciation okay so that's for the rack let's work the forklift the forklift the uh, cost is 35 depreciation is 23 and it's long term 35 minus 23 first we have to find the basis the basis is 12,000 we sold it for five thousand so we sold it for five the basis is 12 we have a loss the basis is 12 we have a loss of seven thousand the loss is 1231 loss 1231 loss okay that's the forklift so we have 1231 loss here and we have here ordinary income of forty seven thousand um the third asset we bought it for 87 depreciation of 34 let's find the basis 87 minus minus 34,000 will give us a basis of 53,000 that's the basis we sold it for 87 87,000 minus 53,000 87 minus 53 will give us a gain of let me see um uh, uh sold it i'm sorry i'm sorry we sold it for 60. let me see one more time so 53,000 is the basis sold it for 60. 60 minus 53 will give us a gain of 7,000. a gain of 7,000. so from march 2017 to march 2018 the, after march 12 2018 make it long term so it is a long term but it is everything's going to be section 1245 recapture why because notice the gain 
is less than the depreciation. Therefore, it's section 1245, okay? So this is also ordinary income, and it's 7,000. Okay. Assuming that Sienna had no recapture net 1231 losses from prior years, analyze these transactions and determine the amount of any that will be treated as long-term capital gain. Guess what? There is no long-term capital gain. No long-term capital gain. Okay, no long-term capital gain. No long-term capital gain. Okay, we have 1231 losses, but no long-term capital gain. Then the 7,000 and the 40 and the 47,000 are ordinary income due to section 1231 asset. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Okay, Copper Industries sold three assets. Data on these properties are below, rack, forklift, and basically the same type of asset. And they're all long-term, okay, or long-term. Determine the amount and character of the recognized gain or loss from the disposition. Let's go through the same thing again. Uh, the rack is has a cost of 110, cost is 110 the cost is 110 the depreciation is 70 therefore the basis is 40,000 we sold it for 55 minus 40 that will give us a gain of 15,000 again notice the gain is less than the depreciation this is ordinary income gain of 15,000 due to subject to due to section 1245 recapture okay let's look at the forklift the cost of the forklift is 45,000 that's the cost the depreciate the depreciation is 21 as a result the basis is 24,000 that's the basis we sold it for 15 I guess we're gonna have a loss here minus the basis of 24 we have a loss of 9,000 a loss of 9,000, and this is section 1231 loss, okay? And the bin, cost is 97 minus depreciation of 31. That's going to give us a basis of 66. Oh, we sold it for 60. We have another loss here. Minus 66 will give us a loss of 6,000. So this is a loss of 6,000 section 1231 loss okay section 1231 loss all right let's take a look so we already determined the amount and the character okay assume that copper has 6000 uh, non recapture net 1231 losses from prior year analyze these transaction and determine the amount of any that will be treated as long term capital gain guess what <laughs> they have losses but we have no gain really okay um, now what they do is they have six if they have six thousand from the past, okay. Now what's going to happen? They have an additional fifteen thousand. Okay, they have an additional fifteen thousand if not net long term capital gain, because uh, in this situation, it's fifteen thousand of of net losses. There is no gain to be treated as capital gain. There is no gain. Okay. So the fifteen thousand section twelve forty five recapture. Okay, here. This fifteen thousand will be treated as ordinary. There's okay. There is nothing. There is not. There is no long-term capital gain. Okay, it's treated as ordinary income. Okay, and um, and the fifteen thousand actually they're both fifteen thousand and the fifteen thousand here is treated as ordinary loss. So we have fifteen thousand of ordinary income and fifteen thousand of ordinary loss. We have no again no long-term capital gain. And in the real world again. Usually you don't get a gain. You might, but it's not likely to have a personal property, sell it after using it for a period of time greater than its cost. Because in order to have a long-term capital gain, you have to sell it greater than its cost. So if you have any questions, any comments about Section 1245 Recapture, please email me. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck and study hard.